G'day guys and gal, Warhammer 40k is not short of mysterious and wildly overpowered devices. The Necron Pylons, capable of literally putting hell in the naughty corner, Planet Killer, a ship that can quite easily kill planets. The Throne of Glass, which does something amazing, but no one really actually knows what it is. However, all of these pale in comparison to the legendary Golden Throne, Mankind's Magnum Opus. This device is so advanced and complicated that the Emperor of Mankind, the smartest being in the galaxy, merely modified it to suit his needs rather than actually created it. Even the best and brightest minds in the Imperium aren't sure how to properly maintain it. Just doing their best to keep it running as if it fails, and boy is it failing, then the human race will die along with it. Either way, it's an incredible piece of lore that is worth talking about today. Before we get started, being ugly is a choice. Everything from your hair, to your shape, to your size, to your style can be changed for the better with a bit of effort. Some things are harder to change, so today let's focus on one of the easy ones. With the help of today's sponsor, Geology, let's focus on your skin. So many of us struggle with dry, blotchy, oily, puffy, or acne-ridden skin. You may think that's just the genetic cards you've been dealt in life, but that's just not the case. Nearly all skin issues can be solved or at least treated with a skincare routine. Geology understands that us blokes have no idea where to start start or how to actually employ skincare. So it simply gets us to fill out a quick survey, then BAM! A customized, affordable and effective skincare routine is delivered to your door. Geology isn't just skincare though, they have high quality hair care and body washes as well. Everything you need to get fresh, clean and less ugly. So to get a massive 70% off your first skincare package, as well as 30% off an additional hair or body product, then use code MAGICAL70 or the link in description. I've never featured a physical product with such a massive discount code before so you'd actually be a bit of a drongo not to at least try it. Cheers to Geology for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the lore of the Golden Throne, its origins, power and purpose, as well as some of the pretty interesting things it's been used for for the last 10,000 years. Uh, let's get into it. Before the Golden Throne became the Big E's spicy life support system slash eternal torture device, it had a variety of uses most of which nobody actually knew about. But before we get into those uses, where did this device actually come from? Who created it, if not the Emperor? Well, once again, it's a bit vague with a number of potential origins for it. The current leading theory is that it was a device from the Dark Age of Technology, where mankind had ascended to godhood through pure science. Nothing was out of their grasp. AI with souls and sentience, mechanical worms that could devour space-time, time-traveling ships, you name it, they could probably do it. So it's not a stretch to think that they also managed to create a device that allowed one to project and amplify their psyche to a godlike degree. The only issue with that logic is that back then there was like, no psychers. So who the hell was the Golden Throne actually designed for? Maybe the Emperor had it commissioned during mankind's technological peak, then either lost it for a time or put it into storage. Either way, the Big E claims it was found on Terra and brought to the Imperial Palace to be repaired and heavily modified to be more specific to his needs. However, there's likely more to it than that. In the current era, it's stated that the mechanisms of the Golden Throne are failing. No matter what the Inquisition or Mechanicus does, they can't seem to be able to maintain the core module, which is the part the Big E found and then added his own modifications to. No STC fragments, no knowledge or forbidden artifacts seem to work. Hence the Inquisition turned to the Dark Elder for aid. The Dark Elder are confident they will be able to fix the Golden Throne. Is this because it was originally a creation of the Elder or the Old Ones? After all, both of those Xenos are incredibly psychic and it would make sense for them to have such a device. Or is it just the fact that the Dark Elder are wildly good at working with semi-dead bodies? Either way, the Dark Elder kind of dogged the deal and was stopped before they could apply their fixes so the answer was never revealed. I would say that the Golden Throne was influenced or even created using Xenotech, such as from the Elder, then heavily modified by the Emperor to suit his own exact needs. Although these days the Golden Throne is most famous due to its ability to guide and focus the Astronomicon, originally that wasn't its purpose. Sure, the Astronomicon, a bigger psychic laser beam lighthouse thingo, was still built on Terra. However, the Emperor could just power it via his own psychic might, whilst walking around and killing aliens and shit. It was mentally draining, sure, but he did it without too much dramas from across the galaxy. No, the original use of the Golden Throne was so that the Emperor could slice open the Elder's Webway project and create a man-made Webway gate and guide his forces into it. See, the Webway has its own level of sentience and defense mechanisms. It hates anything other than 
than Eldar been within it, and it will actively try and cut off, confuse, and sabotage unwelcome invaders. Hence, the Emperor Loki used the Golden Throne to grab the webway by the balls and bend it to its will, at least the parts he was colonizing. So realistically, the Golden Throne didn't come into genuine usage until towards the end of the Great Crusade, when Horus was chosen to become the War Master and the Emperor had returned to Terra. He had to be sitting on the throne, plugged in and ready to party, in order to keep the webway gate open and stable. His plan was to eventually build up enough Mechanicum infrastructure so that the gate would remain open without him clenching his asshole super tight, but that was a work in progress. When Horus betrayed the Emperor due to his male pattern boldness, sparking intense jealousy over his father's luscious hair, as well as the resentment built from the fact that the Emperor would have had to low-key engineer boldness into Horus's genome on purpose, shit went sideways. Magnus attempted to warn the Emperor about Horus's betrayal, but he did so like an idiot, smashing a hole in the Emperor's webway project and killing thousands of engineers. The hole led directly to the warp, which allowed countless demons to pour into the webway and slowly drive the defenders back. The rupture of the webway put an extreme amount of strain on the Emperor, who began breaking his balls attempting to hold the project together in the hopes that Magnus could be retrieved and brought to Terra, in order to aid the Emperor in fixing the project. However, with Horus manipulating Lehman Russ, as well as Lehman being a fucking moron, Magnus was forever lost to the Emperor, meaning that the Big E was unable to fix the project, eventually being forced to totally abandon it and seal the gateway. However, as the Emperor wasn't an elder, he didn't know how to seal off sections of the webway properly. See, the webway gets breached all the time, whether that be by Necrons or Demons. However, it's not a huge issue as the Elder can simply close off the breached sections. Yes, it does restrict the webway, but, but better losing small parts than the entire thing. However, the Emperor's human webway wasn't as natural. It was very mechanical and lesser to that of the Elder. So the Emperor wasn't able to just close off sections permanently. As such, even though he shut the webway gate under terror, he now had to put most of his focus into keeping it shut. Otherwise, Demons would tear through the Imperial Palace and destroy everything, including the Astronomicon which would more or less doom mankind. Hence the Emperor took up his vigil on the Golden Throne, putting about 95% of his focus into holding the webway gate shut. All in all, a massive fucking L. If the Emperor had never attempted the webway project or used the Golden Throne, he would have been free to venture into the galaxy and kill Horus himself. However, with him now being forced to sit on the throne, he couldn't do jack shit about the heresy. The Emperor is the only being in the galaxy, other than maybe Magnus, who is able to sit on the throne indefinitely without dying. Even Malkador, one of the greatest psychists to ever live and a perpetual, could only sit on the throne for a few hours before his mind, body and spirit disintegrated into dust. Even the power and life force of 1000 psychers was only enough to power the Golden Throne for a short while, as the Emperor arrived in the webway to save his warriors and bring them out to safety. When the Emperor was wounded by Horus and brought back to the Golden Throne, it would become his life support system, his godlike weapon and his torture device all in one. He merged his body and soul with the device, not just sitting on it like he had been before. The throne was also modified further to act as a genuine life support system and a conduit for the Astronomicon. Previously, it was specifically geared for the Webway project. This allowed the Big E to tap further into its power at the cost of his body shriveling up and more or less dying. The Webway gate needed to remain closed, hence that was one purpose of his ascension. However, he also needed to guide the Astronomicon. Note how I say guide instead of power. Previously, before he had become the galaxy's most powerful lithium vegetable, he could power the Astronomicon pretty easily from almost anywhere in the galaxy. Now that his body was fucked and he was focusing on the webway gate, he no longer had the power to single-handedly operate the golden beacon as well. Hence that's where the 1000 Psyker Sacrifice a Day thing comes from. They aren't devoured by the Emperor, at least not directly. They are expended as mini batteries for the Astronomicon that the Emperor now shapes and guides but cannot directly power anymore. Whether or not he feeds on their souls as they're getting cum blasted by the Astronomicon isn't entirely clear. However, the misconception I'm clearing up is that they aren't sacrificed to the Emperor directly, although the breaking down of the Golden Throne is what has been attributed to the ever-increasing rate of psychers that have been destroyed from their service to the Astronomicon. I hope I'm explaining it well, but just think about it like this. The Golden Throne and the Emperor are one thing. The Astronomicon and the sacrificed psychers are another thing. However, one thing cannot survive without the other and they are heavily intertwined.
Funnily enough, even though it's often stated that if the Golden Throne failed or the Emperor died, then demons would bum rush Terra and probably turn the Soul System into another Eye of Terra, dooming the Imperium. However, the reality is different. The Emperor ordered Vulcan to construct the Talisman of Seven Hammers, a dead man switch that is to activate if the Emperor is ever to be truly killed. This dead man switch would cause Terra to become completely and utterly destroyed, breaking the webway gate and likely stopping the Soul System from becoming another Eye of Terra. This is still super shit for the Imperium and it would result in a lot of darkness. However, it does mean that Mars would live on and mankind would have a chance to survive in various pockets across the galaxy, like Ultramar. The idea is that if a sufficiently large enough Chaos Force or Champion were able to actually kill the Emperor, then they would also die, throwing Chaos into a uh, more chaos and giving the now fucked Imperium some breathing room while they figured out what to do. So we know the Golden Throne keeps the webway shut. We know that it guides the Astronomicon and we know that it keeps the Emperor somewhat alive. Can it do anything else? Well, yes. As I said, it also acts as a psychic amplifier, and it's implied that the Emperor is actually able to do battle with the Chaos Gods, denying them easy victories and preventing them from just opening warp gates over Terra and other human worlds. This is why Korn was able to dump a massive army on Terra when the Great Rift opened. The opening literally knocked the Emperor out for a bit, meaning he could no longer fight the Chaos Gods, hence they were able to put warp rifts almost everywhere. But if the throne is failing, what is the point? We're all fucked, aren't we? Well, I made a video already that would detail the potential outcomes of a failed Golden Throne slash a dead Emperor, and honestly, not all of them are bad. If the Golden Throne were to fail, then sure, Terra is gone. However, the Emperor might be freed into the warp to become a genuine god and protect humanity, or he could reincarnate back into flesh and blood and do the Great Crusade all over again. Or mankind could die a horrible death. It's a theory that no one wants to test. However, I don't think we need to worry. The Inquisition have activated dozens of contingencies, sending out agents to track down artifacts that could repair the throne across the galaxy. The Dark Elder are still interested in helping to fix it, and even the Custodes have sent a shield host to try find the lost forge world of Moravan, which is said to have the solution to the throne's problems. I don't think GW is just gonna be like, all right guys, we made enough money, let's kill the Emperor and end the setting. So one of the solutions will work. I mean, just with the increased power the Emperor's gained from the opening of the Great Rift, maybe he'll just fix it himself. I mean, he literally beat the shit out of Nurgle for a laugh, so I think a few screws being loose in his chair isn't the biggest deal. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up a major mini, or buy a 2023 A3 nude cosplay calendar, or pick up some 400k merch, or join the Patreon. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more golden content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.